Hi, welcome to another exciting tutorial of Stream Developers. This video teaches you how to build a low latency Android live streaming app, similar to Facebook Live or Twitch, using the Android Video SDK of Stream. The Stream's video SDKs allow developers to build audio and video calling, audio room and live streaming apps for React, iOS, Android, React Native, Flutter and JavaScript. If you are new to stream video, visit our website, sign up for a new account, and check the developer page to get started. Our final project in this tutorial will have only two screens. On the first screen, we can start the live stream. The second screen displays a button to stop the live stream. Download the project from this GitHub repository and run it using the latest version of Android Studio. I recommend using Android Studio Giraffe to test the app. The key features of our demo app include low latency live streaming. The app will also run on Stream's Global Edge network for scalable and reliable live streaming. The Android Video SDK is powered by WebRTC, so you can use any live streaming software supporting RTMP such as OBS Studio or Wirecast for publishing your live streams. Our demo app will also support reactions, chat messaging, recording, and transcription. Let's begin with the following chapters. We will create a new Compose project in the latest version of Android Studio. I will show you how to fetch the SDK as a dependency. We will broadcast a live stream from an Android device and render the host video. Finally, I will show you how to publish live streams using OBS Studio. So let's get started. I will launch Android Studio and create a new project. Under Templates, we will select Phone and Tablet and Empty Activity, then Next. Let's call the project Live Stream Demo and save it to a location. We now have a new Compose project in Android Studio, so let's add the Video SDK as a dependency. We will add the implementation in the build.gradle file under the Apps folder. So let's expand the Gradle script. You have noticed we have two Gradle files, the one for the project and one for the app. Make sure to select the Gradle file for the app. Let's scroll down and add the SDK as a dependency over here. I already have the code, so I'm going to paste it here. You can get this code snippet from the live streaming tutorial on our website. Once we add the SDK, we need to sync the Gradle file. So on the top right, you can see we have this button, Sync Now. Let's click that. The first implementation consists of the core stream video SDK for Android. The other implementations here are optional because if you create a new Compose project, Android Studio add them by default. But I just added them in case Android Studio doesn't add them all. So we have now added the Android SDK of stream video. Let's see how to broadcast a live stream from an Android device. For the sake of simplicity, we will do the implementation in the main activity Kotlin file. So let's select that. I will add the following properties above set content. In order to access the video SDK and work with it, we need a user and user token. So here we define a user token, user ID, and also call ID with all these placeholders. We will replace them later. Next, we need to create a user. Usually, the user is an authenticated user, but it can also be a guest or an anonymous user. For a production app, the user should be generated from your backend during sign up or login. After we create a user, we need to create the stream video client. For a production app, I recommend adding this implementation to your application class or dependency injection model. But in this tutorial, we want to keep things simple, so we are doing everything in the main activity Kotlin file. After we create a video client, we can create and join a call with this code snippet. Here we create a call object and set the type as live stream. When building a live streaming app, we get this type by default, but you can modify this type in your stream dashboard. Finally, using the call.join method, we can create and join the call and initialize real time transport for audio and video. Our last step is to update set content to display a text on the screen. Let's remove these two composables because we don't need them. To display the text, we will create another composable here that will display 
a text at the center of the screen. Then we would remove the live stream demo team and replace it with our own. So here we use the video team from the SDK and using this function we just added, we want to display the text to do render video. What we need to do next is to fill all these placeholders. We can get all these user credentials for the live streaming tutorial on our website. The user credentials will be similar to this image. So I will copy the credentials from that tutorial to replace these ones. Let's replace the token. Let's replace the other two properties as well. Then I will add all the necessary imports. Let's now run the app. You can see here I have my device set as Moto E32. So I will click run app. You can see that has been successful. So we now have the text at the center of the screen that says to do render video. So this is how to broadcast a live stream on an Android device. Let's move on to the next by rendering the host video. In this session, we will build a UI for displaying the local video, that is the video of the host. We will also add a button to start the live stream. Before we do the implementation, let's look at how the video rendering works in the SDK. The underlying technology uses a media server called Selective Forwarding Unit, SFU. Stream uses the SFU cascading technology to replicate your live streams over different servers worldwide. This makes it possible to reach larger and broader audience in real time. To do the implementation, we need to update our video team. So I will select the video team and remove it and paste this sample code. Let's now look at a summary of the video team we just added. You can see we have all these call and participant states. The call state is a state holder observable, which exposes all call and participant states during a particular call. For this live streaming app, we can use this object to display information such as connection status, number of participants, the start time, and more. You can learn more about the call and participant state in our documentation. Next, let's look at the UI. It consists of a standard Jetpack Compose layout system. We are also using the video renderer from the SDK. Using the video renderer, we show the host video as well as a fallback. Basically, we can use the video renderer to render the local and the remote participant's video. Next, when our connection is successful, we display the backstage and a button to go live. Once we are live, we display another button to stop the live stream. When the live stream starts, we also display the total number of participants as well as the duration of the live stream. So this is the summary of the code that renders the host video. To go live, let's run the app on an Android device. You can see here it is connected to my Moto E32 phone and it also displays the host video and a button to go live. So I can tap on the button to start the live stream. Now we have the video of only the host but we can watch the live stream in the browser using the companion stream video web app. So we now have the app running on an Android device. So let's go to the browser. You can find this live stream tutorial from our documentation. Over here, it says for testing, you can join the call on our web app. So if I scroll up, the user credentials are the same as what we are using in the Android app. So let's scroll down again and click the button, join call. In the companion web app, we see the host video and on the top left, we now have two participants in the live stream. That is how to render the host video. Next, let's look at how to publish with WebRTC or RTMP. We are going to use OBS Studio for this. To be able to publish the live stream with OBS Studio, we need two requirements, the stream key and the server URL. We can print this information from the Android app and then feed it into OBS Studio to start the live stream and then we can join from the web or join with the Android app. Let's look at how to do that. Here we have the go live button. We can use it to print this information in LogCut. So let's add these two properties. So here we want to print the RTMP URL as well as the streaming key. So let's run the app again. If we run the app and tap the go live button, we then log the information in LogCut. You can see here I have LogCut open and now we have the RTMP URL and streaming key. 
So the server URL starts from here. Then in the end, we have the streaming key. So we need to feed this information into OBS Studio. I will copy the first one and launch OBS Studio. In OBS, we can enter this information by going to settings. From the left category, I will select stream. Over here, you have to make sure the service is set to custom. You can choose the other options if you want to, for example, stream to Twitch or Facebook or YouTube. So let's leave it as custom. And then here, we have the server URL. Let's remove the one we already have and then paste the one I have in the clipboard. We also need to enter the streaming key. So I'm going to remove this and go back to Android Studio. Then I will copy the streaming key from here and paste it here. Once we are done, we click apply and okay. So to start the live stream, we go to the bottom right and tap this button, start streaming. After starting the live stream in OBS Studio, we can now watch it from the web and use the Android app to watch it as well. I have the Android app already running, so let's watch the live stream from the web as well. Over here, I will click join call. So from the web app, you can now see from the top left, we have three people in the live stream. One from the web, one from the Android phone, and the third one from OBS. So this is all I have for you in this video. I showed you how to broadcast a live stream from an Android device. We looked into how to render the whole video. We didn't end there. We dived into using OBS Studio to publish the live stream and watch it from the web and using the Android app. We covered only the fundamentals about building a live streaming app using the stream's Android video SDK. To go beyond the basics, I encourage you to check our documentation for all the advanced features such as custom events, reactions, chat messaging, as well as push notifications. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to reach out for any question or suggestion. Thanks for watching this video.